Sometimes it's fun to cook something complicated with a lot of exotic components and fancy techniques. Our favorite meals, however, tend to be the simple ones with a few honest ingredients and a lot of love. These delicious mashed potatoes have been a part of my Thanksgiving table all my life, and they always remind me of home and family. I hope you'll take a minute to focus on honest simplicity, to get down to the bedrock of what's really important. I think that's the key to so much. I'm Jenny Randolph, welcome to this day. We are all about the potatoes today. And this might seem like a really simple recipe, but over the years, there are a few tips and tricks that I have learned to make sure that your mashed potatoes come out consistently amazing every time that you make them. So let's jump right in and get started making this classic dish, mashed potatoes. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is obviously peel the potatoes. Now I know that there's a lot of people that prefer to leave the peels on, I only do that when I'm using a red potato or a golden potato, like a yellow potato. But for Thanksgiving and for usual times when I'm making my mashed potatoes, I like to use a russet potato. I like to use the big one. And I don't like to leave the skins on. The only time I like to leave the skins on is when they're baked, obviously, and then that's okay. But these are a little bit tough for a Thanksgiving kind of menu in my opinion, and I like my mashed potatoes soft and whipped. So the first thing we're gonna do is peel these potatoes. So I wanted to stop peeling for just a minute to let you know something really important. And if you can see right here, right where we have been peeling right here, you can see a bit of green. And you don't want green potatoes because there is a, a chemical reaction that happens when the potato is exposed to too much light. And this part can give you a stomach ache, it can make you sick. Now, you'd have to eat a whole bunch, but if you're cutting and you're peeling your potatoes and you see a bunch of green in a potato, it's best just to throw that one away and start with a new potato. If there's just a little bit, like on this one, go ahead and cut it away and the rest of the potato will be fine. But keep an eye out for green potatoes because they will give you an upset stomach if you keep the green in. So our potatoes are all peeled. And there is another trick that I wanna share with you that if you are in a hurry, like for a big meal, especially something like Thanksgiving, the night before, peel all of your potatoes but leave them whole and put them in your pot, cover them with cool water and put the lid on top and soak them overnight. And that does a couple of things. It eliminates a bunch of work of peeling potatoes on Thanksgiving day but it also infuses the potato with water and helps them to boil faster the day that you're making them. So go ahead and don't be afraid to peel them the day before, stick them in cold water, and that trick works every single time. They boil up so fast, it's amazing. You wanna make sure that the potatoes are in water most of the time because it's gonna prevent them from turning brown. And so what I tend, tend to do is just cut my potatoes in half the long way and cut good sized chunks for boiling. And throw them back into the cold water. There's a really good rule of thumb when you are boiling vegetables. If the vegetable grows underneath the ground, you put it in cool water to start the boiling process. If the vegetable grows above the ground, you wanna make sure that your water is boiling before you put the vegetable in. And that'll make sure that you just get the best outcome possible. So now that we have them all cut up and they're approximately the same size because that's going to help with the boiling process. But the other thing that's gonna help with the boiling process is to make sure that you have about an inch to two inches above the potatoes in your pot. Again, cool water. And what that's gonna do is it's going to help the boiling water kind of get around the potatoes and give them a chance to move so that they're not all clumped together. And that is gonna help them boil faster as well. Now we want to salt our water. Now this is another tip 
that I have found over the years. A lot of times when I was younger, I would just put the potatoes in plain water, put them on the stove and let them cook and then salt them as I was mixing them. And you know, sometimes the salt wouldn't dissolve or you would get too much or you wouldn't get enough. But this trick helps every, every single time. It's also how I boil my pasta. We are making about five pounds of potatoes today. So in this pot, we have approximately 12, 13 cups of water. So we wanna make sure that that water is really salted because the salt is going to get infused in the potatoes that way and it's gonna cut down the time that you have to salt them after. And it's also gonna make sure that every piece of potato is salted. It gets infused with the boiling water and it's a really good way to make sure that they're seasoned just right. So this is gonna scare you because it's gonna look like a lot of salt, but remember, we have a tremendous amount of water and five pounds of potatoes to season. So I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it. It's probably gonna end up being about three to four tablespoons of salt. So don't get too scared as you see me pouring it in. Like I said, it looks like a lot of salt, but it is the absolute best way to get that flavor into the potatoes. Now, it's over to the stove. We're gonna start it on a high heat to get it to boil and then turn it down to a simmer and we're going to cook these for about 35 or 40 minutes. So another tip I wanna share with you is the wooden spoon trick. And if you place a wooden spoon over your boiling pot of water, it's gonna prevent it from boiling over. And that means you can walk away from it and you don't have to stand there watching it the whole time. So you wanna make sure that they're done and you can do this by picking up a potato, one of the larger pieces probably is better, and putting a fork in it. And if the fork goes through really easily just like that, you know that the potatoes are done and they're ready to be mashed. So let's go ahead and drain this pot. So as our potatoes are draining in the sink, I want to share another tip with you and that is to make sure to have your butter and your milk at room temperature. You don't want to put cold butter and cold milk in with hot potatoes. You don't want to bring that temperature down because that helps it to be smooth and really, really creamy at the end. So make sure that you have your milk and your butter sitting out on your counter. Now if you want to get fancy, you can also just heat it up together and melt your butter and warm your milk together, but you don't have to do that. Room temperature is totally fine. Also, if you wanna make it vegan, just use a alternative butter, your favorite vegan butter, and you can use an alternative milk as well. I've used soy milk and oat milk, and there's another milk that I've used, cashew milk. That's what I use in there. So I've used all those milk and those really, really work well. Stay away from coconut milk or almond milk because they're not gonna give you that creaminess that you're looking for. So stick with the three that I mentioned and you'll be off to the races. I'm gonna go ahead and just slice up the butter into tablespoons. I do a whole stick or eight tablespoons of butter and I dump it all in to my mixing bowl. That way, when the hot potatoes hit that room temperature butter, they're gonna melt it really beautifully. Add our warm potatoes to our mixing bowl. Now, technically, because I'm using my KitchenAid, these are whipped potatoes. They're not exactly mashed potatoes, but I really like the consistency that the KitchenAid gives. Now, you can use your masher and do the same thing. Just add your butter and add your milk, and you can hand mash them. You can use a hand mixer, but this is what I have, and this is what I've been using for years and years and years. So start slow and we're just going to pulse the potatoes to make sure that all of the big pieces get mashed down. You can take a spatula and move the pieces down a little bit. I like to make sure that the big pieces are all mashed up before I add my milk. Now we're gonna slowly add the milk. Now I've put about a cup, a cup and a half of milk. We may or may not use all of it. So just watch and make sure that you can get the consistency of the potatoes that you want. And stop.
stop it, push it down, check the consistency. I think a little bit more milk is gonna just do the trick. Also at this point, take a little taste and make sure that they are salty enough for you. We might end up adding just a little bit more salt to this, but right now we're good. We're just right on the edge, but as we're adding milk, just be aware of that. These look perfect. They look amazing. Before we put it in our serving bowl, we want to make sure that we have the final seasonings just right. So take one more taste. Mmm, these are perfect. We didn't even have to add any salt to them in the mixture because we had already salted our water and it just saves you so much time and such a, it's such an amazing step to do. Now we just want to turn these out into our serving bowl. We want to make sure that we get all of the potatoes. Don't want to leave any behind. Our final step is to make these look pretty. Now, to me, these are gorgeous, but if you're going to serve them for Thanksgiving, let's just church them up just a little bit more. So what I like to do is I like to add about a tablespoon more of butter right in the center of the potatoes, right down there. And those warm potatoes are gonna melt that butter and it's gonna be so nice and it'll just drip out when somebody goes in. And in our family, we fight over that buttery part and so whoever gets that first is always a winner. And this is something that my mom always did for her mashed potatoes. She took a little bit of paprika. It doesn't really add any flavor or any spice. It just makes it look pretty. She would always just sprinkle just a bit of paprika all over the top just to kind of give it a festive look. And so I have absolutely continued that tradition. And there we have it. All of the tricks and tips that I have for you in order for you to make the best mashed potatoes for your Thanksgiving table. Thank you so much for joining me this time. I'd like to let you know that if you're looking for more Thanksgiving recipes, they are listed in the description box below, along with this full recipe that we did today. I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, hit that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'd just like to tell you Happy Thanksgiving and we'll see you next week.